Hello, I'm Jill Westerman. I'm Vice Chair of the Further Education Trust for Leadership and I'm here to talk to Professor Martin Dole, who's the Fettel Professor of FE and Skills, about his experience of being in that role um, for the last two and a half years. So, good morning, Martin. Good morning. So, you're the first Fettel Professor of FE and Skills. So, how has it been? What was your starting point and where's the journey taken you until now? Well, at first, I've got to say it's an absolute privilege to, after a, a kind of fairly lengthy career or two careers, to have this opportunity to both reflect and contribute from the basis of an academic position. So very grateful indeed for having had that opportunity afforded to me by the Trust. Uh, how's it been? Um, well, the first thing, I think, mean, when you set into anything new, you have to think through what you can contribute most helpfully and usefully to the mission of the organisation that you're going to be a part of. And the key organisation I'm, I'm a part of is, is FETL, the Trust. So thinking through its mission of leading thinking mm -hmm. in further education and skills and seeing what the position at UCL, Institute of Education, allows me to do, most particularly in contributing to that mission. Um, and in that regard, I mean, it's thinking of put it in two dimensions, I think. First, how I can both affect thinking in the university about further education. It is a world-leading university. There are a number of influential voices and very uh, capable, inquiring minds there, but a, a limited understanding about what further education is, uh, what further education and skills can contribute. So affecting thinking inside the university is important, but also then thinking about how I can benefit and the trust by implication can benefit from the thinking that's going on inside the university as well. So it's a two-way street and from the outset trying to think how and why and in which, what way we can best benefit from having the chair inside the university. So that's where I started from and I've now been thinking that through and trying to resolve down what I can do. Why do you think FE has been so underrepresented in terms of thinking with institutes of education? I think it's I, it's a combination of its its history. It, it's it, people represent it as an amorphous, amorphous character. The term for education is, is a very broad one. It's a very inclusive one, and as I kind of demonstrated in my first inaugural professorial lecture, which was a big deal. I didn't really know how, how, what a big deal it was in the university when I actually had to front up and in front of my contemporaries, peers and, and others explain. But in that lecture, I, I explored the fact that this term further education has grown from the point of view of when it was first used in the early 20th century and has accreted other functions to it. So it started from a relatively narrow or narrow base of technical education or adult education. Various components mm. were then lumped together to this term further education. And as they were lumped together, the distinctiveness in people's minds was, was muddied. Uh, that, I, I, that sounds like a, a, a pejorative term. I don't think it's, I don't mean it to be pejorative. It's that inclusiveness, that openness, and what Dame Roof and the, the chair of, of, or the president of FETL, as, as I identified, is it's, it's a, been an adaptive layer. It's just grown functions. But in the minds of policymakers and researchers, it's kind of everything and nothing. In fact, what I came to the conclusion of is it, it, the definition of further education is actually being remarkably consistent. It's been defined by what it's not. Not education in a school, or in a university. It's almost everything else that doesn't fit is poured into this domain called further education, which then policymakers play with bits of it rather than seeing it as a, 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 a holistic whole or a, a comprehensive system. So I think we've suffered both from the point of view of policymakers and for researchers looking at the totality. They tend to look at bits and not have a sense of the whole. So do you think it's as simple as that, that 
because it's not easy to define, HE researchers within education have largely, largely ignored it? Or do you think it's a, it's a broader symptom in terms of the place of further education within the thinking of policymakers, educationalists in general? I, there are other factors that affect it. So I think you're right to point out other factors, but I think the definitional aspect is a really strong one. I mean, it's affected by the fact that many researchers within university have gone, if you like, someone's called the academic high road. They went to a school, they then emerged in a university, became an academic, and the, the point at which they touch or feel further education has been very limited. Mm -hmm. um, s there are those that have come through further, further education, worked in further education, and moved into the academic sphere, but they've been relatively s a small number. Mm -hmm. Much smaller number, I think, than those that train to be a teacher, become a teacher, then move into universities mm -hmm. to, to be uh, departments of education to, to form the new, new teachers and teacher education, teacher research around practice. We have just been, by scale, much more underrepresented mm -hmm. in that space. And so far as it kind of academics, and sometimes academics beyond education, social scientists might look at us, or further education or economists, they tend to look at the bit that affects their world. Mm. So you get people looking at technical education, you get people looking at careers education, you might get people looking at uh, social equity, hugely important, and, and looking at FE from that perspective, but they tend to look at mm. the perspective they're interested in, rather than the totality of what further education and skills represent. And just thinking about that, I think that notion that we reflect on what's familiar to us initially, a, a, a lot of people talk about the way that the Secretaries of State really focus on the area of education that's been most important to them. Yeah. So I think if you think of the Secretaries of State, it was <coughs> only David Blunkey to come through the FE system himself and taught in further education who actually focused on lifelong learning. I, I think that's right, but even in the case of uh, uh, David Blunkett, who you know, I'm a great admirer of and had a, an amount of work to do with him with the Association of Colleges. David's experience is partial. And I mean, he's a, a huge expo uh, exponent and, 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 you know, champion for lifelong learning. But we'll see it in a particular light, which is, in, in his sense, I think he went back to a, a college to get his A-levels, then to do his degree. Um, so he would see it in that sort of recovery yes. role. Yes. He won't see it in his the first choice, mm. potentially, for a young person who wants to follow a more practically based, uh, focusing on a job and or technical education route. So people see it from the partial backgrounds, even if they do have a knowledge mm. of, of, of the system. And because FE is so multifaceted, they can come thinking they have an understanding of further education when they don't, because they've only seen a part of that. So the starting point, I think y you referred to Dame Ruth talking about the aspiration of Fettel was, was twofold. It was to take <coughs> HE into FE, but also to raise awareness of FE within HE. So I in a sense, you've talked about the starting point being moving into a world where FE wasn't really thought about a lot and thinking is what Fettel wants to encourage. So how has it been? What's your experience of that, of that progress or journey? Well, I'd be, I don't know, it sounds like an advert here, but I've been very fortunate indeed to be in the Institute of Education located with UCL on, on at least two grounds. First of all, the home that, that was found for the chair was when the Centre for Post-14 Education and Work within the Institute which has a long history of being involved in this area. It's one of the isolated islands of thinking in this regard. Uh, in, ev but even in there, academics, as I, I be knew but have, have been reminded, tend to have quite particular interests mm. that they explore and go forward. Um, but finding myself in, in that situation, I think, was were very helpful insofar as I had it, colleagues who did know a lot about further education, but and took a longer view, but some of their thinking was a little bit behind where the world 
was. So I, I hope in some ways I've, I've, I've affected their thinking about the situation as is now. And I also think the thinking wasn't just about further education, about the, how further education is seen by policy makers, mm. building on my previous experience at the Association of Colleges. So trying to combine those two worlds. So I hope I had an effect on the Institute, and that was a good place to be for me. But it's also been a time of real change in the Institute of Education because it's been merged and with the University College London, I mean, one of the top 20 universities in the world, with, with Nobel Prize winners all over the place. And it's been great to actually be able to reach out to the other departments within the university, beyond, beyond the narrow in the Institute. So there's the people who work in skills in the Institute. The Institute is much more than that. Still has a heavier influence on school education and higher education. But I've been able to affect the school and higher education people from inside the institution, it, inside the Institute, particularly around things like higher skills and higher level apprenticeships. But also been able to work out to places like uh, the Institute for uh, Innovation and Public Purpose, recently set up by a, a kind of world-leading expert, uh, Mariana Mazzucato, and I'm hoping to be able to do work there, which takes FE out of the world we have and begins to affect and be affected by worlds beyond here. So, for instance, we've got a, a round table coming up shortly where Mariana's deputy, pr Professor Reiner Cattle, is going to have a give us a view and, and kind of involve, be involved in a conversation about prospects for collaboration in further education between further education providers and between further education providers and other providers of education, uh, where previously it's been a very competitive field, particularly since 1992, and that's the predominant behaviour set, is how we move to both collaborative approaches as well as retaining a, mem a, a measure of uh, comp competitive behaviour as well and how those two things can coexist. They coexist in other sectors of the economy, so understanding how they exist in other sectors of the economy, what the conditions are and how that will happen is important. So that kind of link with another department is important. There's a further department, I'm, in a, I'm not so closely involved in this, but working for something like the Bartley School of Geog Social Geography is seeing FE in its place, not, not in the locality and how it affects others and is affected by them in, in, in social ecosystem thinking, which is a real growth area of thinking, both in the Institute of Education and I think also from University College London's point of view.